Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 145. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name's Ellis Hughes. And my name's Patrick Ward. Thanks for checking out TidyX. As always, like and subscribe on that YouTube channel. Drop us a comment down below. We'll get back to you. Maybe one of your questions will turn into one of the shows. And if you like the work we're doing, we love doing it, and you want to support us, uh, we do have a Patreon page. We're super appreciative of whatever that you may give. Uh, that all being said, we're going to jump in today's episode. Um, uh, you can see here on the screen, we've got a, a shiny app. So I'll tee up a little bit of a use case here. Um, a lot of times in, in sport, um, you know, sports science, strength and conditioning, medical staffs are tracking players on longitudinal data, and they're flagging players to have discussions about with respect to training for the upcoming week. And so what we wanted to do was show a simple way that you could take a, a uh, multi-input shiny app so basically what we're going to do is we have this table here and if you were to click on this table it'll take you directly to that player's information on the plots tab alternatively if you just didn't want to deal with the flags table and you want to go straight to the plots tab that's totally an option too you could select players there and move between variables and it's totally fine so this is an interactive shiny app we've done shiny a lot on this show on this uh, on the screencast we did a whole um, series on shiny apps. The difference in that series was we built an NBA app where we had three different tabs of information, but we had one select input that basically was ruling all three of those tabs. So you'd hit that select input and it would change the data on all three of those tabs specific to that player. Here, we're giving the, the, the practitioner, the coach, the option of saying, hey, I've got this table of information. Oh, I want to drill down into this player. So if I click on his row, boom, I wanna be taken directly to his data. So that's what the finished product looks like. And let's jump into the uh, the nuts and bolts of it. Let's do it. So I'm gonna stop that here right now. All right, so we're gonna, we've got our R script here. It's our shiny app that we've got going on here. We're gonna load a couple libraries for us to use. So we've got Tidyverse for our data manipulation needs shiny for building out our app and then dt which is that table that you guys saw on the first tab there uh, we're going to just do some very simple data setup here this is very inconsequential so i'm going to just kind of jump through it we've got a function that calculates z-score we've talked a ton about this in past episodes we're going to set a random seed where we've got uh so that it's able to be reproducible we've got player a, a tibble that's got player day var one var two var three we're going to group by the player and across all of these calculate a z-score. If the z-score is greater than 1.5, we're going to flag it for any one of these variables. And then we got to call ungroup again, since we've got this group by up here uh, to get rid of that. So now we've got our data set, like I said, zipping through this because this is not the important piece of the code today. But here you go. This is the data set that we're working with. It's got 100 and 105 rows, if I'm reading that properly. Yep, right there. Yeah. Um, and, mm -hmm. and a bunch of data here. Um, so normally, you'd you probably have this sitting in a database or something like that that you'd be pulling in the data from here. Um, so now we're going to get into the Shiny app itself. And so a Shiny app has two components, as we've talked about a fair amount. A UI, which is describing the user interface, UI, and the server, which is the backend R code. That, that you deal with a lot. So I'm going to quickly run through the UI here. So we've got uh, the variables that we care about, var1, var2, var3, um, and we're going to assign that to variables. Next, we're going to actually define our UI using the fluid page function from Shiny, and we're going to make two tabs. And the way you do that is you first define a tab set panel. In order to do some stuff later on, we need to define the ID for this tab set panel. And so we're just going to set the ID to be my tab set panel. Then we've got two of the actual panels. So these are the actual tabs and their content there. This first one is going to be called flags table, and it's going to have the DT output and the output ID is flag TBL. And this is the only content of this tab. The second tab, the title is plots, and it's going to have a little bit more content. The left hand side is going to have the sidebar panel. Well, it's the first entry is a sidebar panel, which is going to line it on the left. It's going to have two inputs, select input and, or excuse me, uh, player and variables. It's going to, the, the first one is 
got the input ID player, the label of name. The choices that you have are the unique players in the D data set. We're not going to have uh, it pre-selected, so it'll just select the first one. And then select uh, multiple is set to false because we don't want you to select multiple players. The second input is variables. The label is going to be called variable. Uh, you, the choices are the variables. Again, it's going to just default to the first one, and we can't let you select multiple. And then in the main part of this tab, we're then going to have the plot output uh, with the output ID PLT. So this is now when we define our plot that we're, we're printing, we'll do render plot and output PLT. So that's like quickly running through the UI there because that's, again, not the most important and tricky piece of the code today. The server is actually a lot more complicated. Patrick, do you want to take us through that? I believe in you. <laughs> Here we go, the server. So um, we're setting up the server in the traditional way. It's going to be a function. It takes an input, output. And we also have to pass that argument session. Um, and that's going to ensure that we have some interactivity between the UI and the server and they're bouncing back information. So we have two tabs. Um, and so we, we tried to set this up where we contained all the information for tab one and then all the information for tab two. So tab one is that table that we saw that was clickable. The first piece of information on tab one is that we have to create the table. So we're just using render data table. You could use render DT if you then wanted to create the data table yourself and make it all kinds of pretty. We just wanted to keep that simple here so we could show you how this works. But basically all we're doing is render data table and we're just dropping in the variables that we want, which is as we saw in the example, the player's name, uh, the, tr the training week or the training session, and then which variables were flagged. There was no numbers on that table. It was literally just information that someone would click into. Now, in order to make this work, if the person were to open the this, this Shiny app and go right to tab one, because that's what they want to see, and they said, oh, I see Bob is flagged. I'd love to look at Bob's data. We have to create a way for them to click that table and get taken over to Bob's data. And that's what we do here at line 88. We create an observe event. And the event that we're observing is, is input flag table rows selected. So what that's telling us is that we're gonna observe the event that when they click on one of those rows, that table row contains information that we need to use in order to get to tab two. So we store that information in this little variable called S um, on, on line 90. And then we just need to find that player's name within that row that they've clicked on. So we go, okay, let's go to our data table. We're going to slice row S. So whatever row they clicked on, we're pulling that row out by itself. And then pull just turns that into a single variable vector. So now we have a player name and that's all we've got there. And now we're ready to update our information. So we update the select input. Remember, on tab two, you can select the player. So that input ID was called player. That's how we're going to talk to tab two. So we're saying input ID player. And what's selected is the player name that they just clicked on on that table. And then because we, we passed an ID to our tab set panel, we're going to update that tab set panel, which is called my tab set panel. We're going to update that. And we're going to say, hey, get us over to the plots tab. We need to get there, right? And so that's going to take us over to that second tab, which we called plots. That's the first uh, That's the first tab. If we go to the second tab, we can get there in two ways. We can go there from hitting the table or we can go there directly. Let's say the person doesn't care about looking at the table. They just want to start scrolling through players. Um, if they went to that table, they could do all of the things that they need to do. Ellis, take us through how we would use or create that table. Yeah, so now that we've got um, that we just kind of skipped over the table, we've gone over to the second tab. All the information that we need in order to generate our uh, plot output is contained inside of this tab here. So we've got a reactive that's listening for. Um, so we've got this reactive. And if you look at this code, there's it's there's not anything going into it except for input player. So whenever this input player value updates, it's going to trigger this entire reactive to rerun. So because that's how reactivity works in Shiny. Um, so we set this up. So then it's going to look at D or it's going to take D. It's going to filter it to keep uh, only cases where the player is in equal to the input player. 
it's going to select out the variables that we care about and it's going to pivot longer and take var1 var2 var3 and uh, take it down into this long format so that we can use it for plotting it's going to drop that value into player dot so this is important because we wanted it to be efficient Right. And so in, what's happening here is we could have tried to have it so that when we clicked on the table, it also tried to write to player dat, but that would cause uh, a lot of repeated information, repeated values calculated. And so yeah. what we did no, here not, is we not a problem for this little data set, but if we had like, you know, 10 seasons worth of data, uh, it's going to slog and, and it's not going to be a fun user experience. Exactly. So we wanted to make it so that it didn't really try to recalculate things a bunch of times. And so this this is just saying, hey, update input player as if a user had clicked on input player itself and update that as opposed to recalculating it multiple times. Then again, in the second piece here, it's going to look at input variables and it's going to filter that player dat that we just derived here and filter it by the input variables and give us our PLT dat reactive. Again, in effort to try to reduce recalculations, this is only going to get recalculated if we update the player, and this is only going to get recalculated when we update the input variable or the player dat. So it's kind of like working its way down. So you can look at var1 and then var3. This is not going to be updated, or player dat's not going to get updated again um only the plt dat variable again just trying to find efficiencies where we can in the smaller data sets so when we go to the bigger data sets we're already used to that mentality of finding ways to make our code efficient so we don't have to go oh no my code takes 15 years to run what am i doing um anyway so now we've got plt dat this goes into render plot render plot is going to look at the reactive values and when they update it's going to re-render and so when plt dat updates it's going to rerun the ggplot here where it's going to take the data ggplot the x-axis is day the y-axis is the value that we've selected uh, it's going to do a, a line plot and then we're going to add a gg title where the input is the player and the variable that we've selected and it goes to mm -hmm. output plt and again this value plt matches the output id for plot output and that's how everything goes back to itself so let's again now that we know the code that's going and, and causing this all to run let's rerun this app and now we can see how everything kind of works together so if you just wanted to go to the plots tab click the plots tab you got this data here and you can click to your heart's content and go through and change the variables change the player. If they're happy with that, excellent. But as, as Patrick referenced earlier, sometimes you have this uh, this table over here uh, from the staff. They've flagged Bob on VAR3. So you can click on Bob, go over to VAR3, and go, hmm, that's interesting. That's way out of bounds here. We should definitely inspect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that? Uh, do you have anything more to add, Patrick? That's it. That's a pretty simple multi, you know, obviously you can take this and make it real pretty and make the plots pretty and add color and, you know, make the table nice and things like that. But uh, this is the basic way to get things off the ground with using multiple inputs and bouncing back and forth between tabs. And it's really all about uh, uh, setting up in your, in your UI, setting up the IDs properly so that your server knows what to communicate with. And then in the server, uh, setting up your observe event so it knows what it's supposed to do when you click on the thing, right? Yep, exactly. Cool with that. So I guess we're going to call episode 145 of TidyX. Thank you all for joining us. As always, my name's Ellis Hughes. You can find me on a variety of social media sites. <laughs> and my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at OSP Patrick. And you can find the screencast on Twitter at, at tidy underscore explain. Tidy gmail tidy.explained at gmail.com is where you can email us but most of the time people uh like and subscribe on that youtube channel and drop us their comments and questions there you never know when you'll end up with your topic on one of our shows uh, and um, we do have a patreon page we're always appreciative of anything that uh, that you may be willing to donate other than that uh, that wraps up episode 145 
Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world.